Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode. So a few days ago, I sat down at my desk to begin writing an email to my list and it was around 7.30 a.m. in the morning, which is kind of early for me to be in my office, but I'm doing one of my 10 day Stripe challenges and part of that involves getting up 6 a.m. every single day for me. When I sat down, my energy was gone. The night before, I didn't finish my work till well after midnight and all I wanted to do at that point was sleep. Now, a few days earlier, I'd slept until past 10 a.m. to catch up on a lot of uh, just overworking way too much. And the difference in how I felt was astounding. I woke up energized, my mind was firing on all cylinders, and I got a lot more done, even though I had less hours in that day. The difference a good night's rest can make to your productivity and overall optimism, it's staggering. But it's not sleep that I wanna to talk to you about today, it's energy. Now, rarely when we talk of productivity do we ever talk about energy. Usually it's more about time management. We use phrases like, I'll have to make time for it, or I don't have time for that, or time is money, or I'm not sure there'll be enough time to get all those things done. But we would actually be better off swapping out time for energy, like, I'll have to set aside some energy for it, or I don't have the energy for that, or energy is money or I'm not sure there will be enough energy to get all those things done. Tony Schwartz, author of The Power of Full Engagement, was the first person that I ever know of to begin talking about this concept of managing energy instead of time. So let's start at the physical level. Let's start at the level of the quantity of energy, the energy that sits at the foundation of all your sources of energy. So there, we live, or most of us live, by a myth. And that myth is that we are meant to operate like computers at high speeds, continuously, for long periods of time, running multiple programs at the same time. But what ends up happening is that we end up, as my friend Linda Stone has said so brilliantly, we end up chasing our own technology. Instead of running it, it ends up running us, and we misunderstand the core of how a human being works, which is this. Human beings are designed to pulse between spending energy and renewing energy, aren't we? Just think of our heart rate. It's meant to rise and fall throughout the day, depending on demand. The same is true for our blood pressure. Our brain waves are meant to move between high-frequency electrical activity right now, as you're listening, and lower frequency at night so you're capable of sleeping. Our muscles are meant to contract in the face of a demand and then relax when that demand eases. And when that does not happen, what you get is back pain and neck pain. We call that structural, but it's actually a failure of energy management. Now, the most obvious energy area that we think of is physical energy. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, when I sat down that morning, I was just operating on fumes. So without adequate sleep, nutrition, exercise, and rest, your energy levels, they're gonna suffer as well as your ability to manage your emotions and focus your attention. Now, assuming that you're well rested and that you're eating well, you're still gonna have peaks and troughs of energy throughout the day. It's gonna be going up and down, up and down. And usually early on in the day, that's when our energy is at its peak. And then you might go and have a big lunch and you'll experience a trough. The single most important thing that you can do as a knowledge worker is manage which activities are getting done during those energy peaks. You gotta be making sure that the most important jobs get done in those times. Now, are you making the mistake of spending those very best moments on tasks which don't require that you're at your best and don't have long-term benefits? For example, reactive tasks like checking and responding to email or going on social media. For me, I know those first few hours of my day when I sit down at my desk and I'm well rested, they are the most important part of my day. This is where I can get some of my very best creative work done. So creating new content like this or writing a blog post or an email to my list, that kind of work, I like to do that in the morning when I'm at that peak 
with my energy. But if you leave it until the very end of the day when your mental energy is gone and you can't focus, you, you're just gonna write garbage. It's not gonna be really good. So besides getting sleep and timing when you do your most important work, what are some other ways that you can improve your overall energy levels? Number one, improve your diet. Now I know that's obvious, it's common sense, but so many people cheat themselves by eating the wrong foods. Most days I will eat predominantly fruit and vegetables. Usually my breakfast, it's a blended fruit smoothie and my three shot latte. Uh, this morning, I put in a banana, orange, half an avocado, a mango, protein powder, and some juice from some fruit we have growing around here. I don't know what it's called. But I blend that up and when I have that, I feel energized in the morning. But some days I might have pancakes with maple syrup. And for the next few hours, even though I know I shouldn't eat that for breakfast, but for the next few hours, I can really feel the difference. So what I'm saying to you is, if you've got something really important to do with your work that's gonna require your full concentration and focus, you gotta be careful about what food you're putting into your body. It really makes all the difference in the world. I mean, diet is everything. If your diet is made up of junk food, if you're starting your day with uh, you know, an American breakfast, as good as they taste, you're gonna be operating at a fraction of your potential. You gotta look at your body and your mind as a high performance engine and your food as fuel. So you wouldn't go and put cheap, low quality fuel into a Ferrari, right? For your work and your life, your body and mind, they are far more valuable and important than a Ferrari. Next, avoid people and situations that you know cause stress. Stress can sap your energy faster than just about anything else. For example, being in debt, that can create extreme stress, especially when people you owe money to are putting pressure on you to pay. It's in the back of your mind all the time and it's a huge drain on your energy. Or another example, stress can also be brought on by certain people. You might have people in your life who just you interact with them and you always feel emotionally drained. You have argument and then you always come away from that interaction just feeling lower energy. So that's why I'm a big fan of having a separate office or a separate work environment away from people that uh, you can avoid working with who would drain your energy. Next, consume caffeine, but not too much. Coffee can be a great biohack to boost your energy levels. And if you've been seeing my content for a while, you know how much I love coffee. So every single morning I'm having my three shot latte today. I've had two almost, uh, one and a half. But I, I find that after I have that coffee for those next couple of hours, I'm at my peak in my mind. I can, I can get really high level work done. So you can consume coffee uh, to put yourself in a higher state, just not too much. Next, cut down on social media. That temptation to just quickly check your phone and see what's happening on your social media apps, that is the greatest destruction of people's energy and focus in the modern age. People are letting the very best hours of the day when their energy is at its peak be wasted on an activity which has virtually no long-term payoff. So having a rule with yourself where you won't check your social media apps or your email for the first few hours of the day, if you follow through with it, that will change your life. Most people who are watching this probably won't do that, but I'm gonna tell you that if you do cut out social media, even if it's for a few hours a day, it'll have a massive impact on your productivity. It really will. So to wrap this up, do not blame a lack of time for not getting the important things done in your day. Instead, start looking at how you've been managing your energy and which tasks that you're giving to those valuable energy peaks throughout the day. And if you have to make adjustments, then make them. But it's all about managing energy as opposed to time. I recommend you get that book, The Power of Full Engagement. It really is one of the all-time great books when it comes to productivity. That's it for today's episode, and I'll see you tomorrow.